Just a, a quick thing there. Um, so Armico, I've only got 15 minutes, so I won't talk about uh, the Armico business, which is a great business. It's going to take me longer than 15 minutes to do that. But uh, we process 80% of the Australian almond growers, not the volume. So we represent about 30% of the volume uh, of the current Australian industry. But I um, just really wanted to share with you today, because if you get out the Agricultural Commodities book, that's in your, in your pack there, and turn to page 91, I can actually give you some red hot the press, red hot uh, off the press information uh, and updates about the arm industry. Um, this is probably a unique opportunity to, be, to do some spruiking about arms because it's now the number one uh, valued horticultural export uh, of Australia. So, um, really, just wanted to step you through our industry perspective as a director of uh, the Arm Board of Australia, and the information provided in the presentation today is being sourced from. The Armour Board, and I see Wayne down the front here. So Wayne uh, certainly supplies a lot of the export and import data. So where are we in the globe? Uh, we're 8% of global production. Um, as Brian said, there's, there was a bit of a rally, which I'll talk to later on, in the mid-2000s, which have driven the Armour production up to the levels that we saw in 2015, which was a record crop. It sits... Um, Australia sits at number two in global production, but we're a key Southern Hemisphere producing country. And unfortunately, over the weekend, Spain, who's it's been a traditional crop in Spain for uh, probably over 100 years, um, but that, that's, that crop got heavily frosted over the weekend. So, so their production is going to be fairly well decimated um, um, for this coming year, which is, well, I shouldn't say it, but that's probably good for us. Um, <laughs> So it is a globally competitive crop and again just highlighting where the industry sits. So in 2015 was a milestone year for, a, for an industry which is well over 80 years old. So for those people who don't know, almonds were an early settler in South Australia and it was a cottage industry for probably six decades. Uh, really started here to strap and become a bit more mechanised, a little bit more uh, competitive as far as uh, crop yields through um, adoption of irrigated crop cropping. So, so here we are in 2015, or we still we just rolled over 2016 uh, as today, basically for the stats. So we produced 80,500 metric tons of almond kernels, and we exported 59,000 tons of almonds to over 40 different uh, countries around the globe, and that uh, was valued at 747 million dollars. So it's Australia's most valuable horticultural crop and it's 36 percent of the total sales uh, between the other horticultural crops. In total we hit the billion dollar mark uh, for the 2015 year. So there's very strong domestic sales and exports. We've uh, clipped over a billion dollars which is a great milestone for the armed industry. Um, probably not going to happen again this year but uh, we'll take the credit for 2015. There's uh, approximately 200 almond growers um, really concentrated on the sea, eastern seaboard in the Murray and Darling Basin, South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, and there's also uh, producing almond orchards in Western Australia. So we have uh, 74,000 acres or 32,000, uh, sorry, 30,200 hectares. Um, for those people that are in the almond industry and uh, investors, it's, it's a very heavily capital intensive uh, crop to start off with, but it does bring uh, rewards um, if you're a patient uh, person. So I guess what we were talking about this morning sessions was that investment dollar and being patient to get that return. And certainly uh, almonds have provided that return. So we're looking at uh, a bit of a rally of plantings happening um, over the next three years, which will take production <coughs> to that 130,000 uh, ton mark by 2025. And we basically know this as an industry because we have our own budwood centre. So, so the nurseries for the almond trees uh, provide uh, orders to, to uh, get to buds orders through the ABA, uh, which will virus index. So you can get a pretty good matrix of what's going in the ground and, and when. Uh, we're a high water user, but uh, I guess, again, this morning's session is about all about returns. Almonds do provide 
a significant return on your water use currently. Um, very efficient in that water use. Uh, technology uh, has really enabled uh, better crop production through drip irrigation, fertigation and soil monitoring uh, systems. So, so water is such a crucial um, input into the almonds that uh, uh, everybody's adopted well best practice as far as their, their orchards are concerned. Uh, there's a, again we got highlighted again this morning, we have got a water uh, system which probably enables a little bit of forecasting on where, where um, the, you know, the value of water and all those sorts of things which is a, a key input cost. Unlike California which uh, are largely unmetered, they might have a pumping cost but they don't actually pay for the water they extract out of the ground if it's on your property. So they're going through those dynamics at the moment. Um, you know, with the help of HIA, uh, there's a heavy investment uh, in the almond industry, particularly on uh, drought proofing uh, the orchards of tomorrow, a lot of high density plantings um, uh, also happening, so there's better rootstocks, better varieties, uh, self fertility, which is, which is a bit of a game changer for probably the smaller um, um, family farm. Um, so all those sort of things are happening at the moment. So we're looking at uh, a $7 million investment going forward uh, in, in regard to a lot of those production trials. So where are we heading? Uh, so a record of 80,000 for a tonne in 2015. Uh, what was significant about that is, is the economics of it. So, so this year, uh, Armand Grow's got a record um, farm gate price. So it's great when you've got a high yielding crop, pretty good quality, matched by record prices, certainly changes the whole economic landscape uh, for those growers. 2016 crop, which is currently being harvested, is estimated to be down um, on the record crop of last year. Brian sort of touched on it. Uh, there was a significant amount of growth happen happened in the industry which brought it to the next level of production, I guess the next level of, of um, some of that horticultural uh, visibility that the that industry gets today. Um, yeah, during the 2006, 8, 9 period there was significant plantings, mostly by MIS schemes. Um, I think the, the, the real value of, of the arm industry is that, that those orchards, uh, even though they may have become distressed orchards, as in, in um, Kellogg MIS schemes falling over, did get undertaken under new ownership structures and are still producing um, you know, high, high quality uh, almonds today. So, so that's really helped um, us become a bit more of a, a, a choice of origin uh, for a lot of our export markets. Um, again, there's mostly largely, oh sorry, mostly mature uh, industry, so we haven't got too much uh, new production to come in to play over the next couple of years. Um, but I think you'll see a step up in production probably prior to, to how we're sort of forecasting because there's certainly a lot more high density, more trees per hectare being planted than the traditional planting spaces. So where we're heading, um, again record crop for 2015, uh, slightly down on, in 2016. Uh, again, mainly through a pollination uh, issue and 2017 we, we should be another record year and the trees are in good health uh, when you drive around the different growing regions and certainly there's certainly good potential for 2017 showing on the trees as far as growth and health goes. What's great about the industry, it's very labour efficient. So it's all mechanically harvested. Um, a lot of people, not even a lot of our key customers, don't actually realise that arm is actually a ground harvested product. So we have these Mad Max type equipment that goes down through the orchards which shake the armors to the, to the orchard floor and then they're basically swept, swept up, picked up and stockpiled. So for a very high value crop, um, they've proven to be very robust in the way that they are harvested and, and processed. And I think that's a real key for, for being globally competitive is that, is that you need something that's basically non-perishable, very hardy and it's got to be mechanically harvested. It's also a very versatile product, so 
So, uh, so all, the, all the different things that you process, there's, we don't call it a waste stream, we call it reclaim. So a lot of the product is then reclaimed and then value added. So almonds have, there's certainly a, uh, a number of eating occasions per day that you're consuming almonds in, whether it's a breakfast cereal, almond milk now, um, if you get a bit romantic at night, could be you could use a bit of almond oil, um, you know. But and you know, for cooking and baking, it's it's a, a gluten-free choice, which uh, most people are starting to move to. So a very versatile product and very waste efficient. From from even the hull and shell, which is a residual from that primary process, it all goes to stock feed. Um, so there's a number of revenue streams for the product. Because of that versatility, uh, it's the number one product for new product development. So just in Australia alone, last year there was 212 uh, new, new products that were launched uh, utilising almonds. And who eats almonds because they're healthy in the room? What, what other reason do, would you don't eat almonds? They taste all right or crunchy? Certainly, it's a really well-researched uh, commodity, and almonds um, certainly deliver the health benefits. Uh, and hopefully, through changes at Fazant's uh, recently, uh, almonds will be one of the few that can actually make pretty good health claims on a, on a packet, because the research is there to back it up. Whoops. Um, food safety is another <coughs> major one. Um, uh, Jim will probably talk about uh, the vegetable industry and we saw a major lettuce um, issue at, at the retailer. So in that industrial retail level, food safety becomes more and more uh, important to make sure the consumer is protected from any um, harmful pathogens. So our industry again is, is tooled up uh, to make sure we're meeting the needs of, of the retailers, our industrial users and overseas markets as far as uh, those micro issues or even MRLs, um, you know, chemical levels. Right. So not only is it a major export uh, crop, uh, we've also been able to successfully grow through some good um, joint marketing promotions for Australian almonds. So uh, domestic sales have also increased 38% in the last five years. And uh, now the price of almonds has declined for the 2016 year, hopefully. Uh, we can see almonds get a little bit more special uh, during the year at key consumption times. But it is a champion for 2015 as far as uh, horticultural exports are concerned. Uh, $747 million uh, of value was exported uh, for the 2015 year, which is a 142% increase from where we were five years ago. So 72% of the crop was exported last year. Um, a lot of work's been done uh, the industry is very collaborative in the way it, it markets its uh, product or really get that market access opportunity. Uh, we do export to over 40 different countries and probably my take home message is all about persistence. So we're an 80 year old plus industry but we just keep fronting up to, to the same markets. Um, first to say that we grow almonds in Australia now, we're saying our almonds are um, food safe, high quality, uh, you know, it should be a, a major choice um, compared to, to the USA. So certainly the recent FTAs are going to help drive demand for Australian almonds um, even further. So we jointly exhibit Australian almonds under, under the Australian almond banner, uh, which is again is pretty unique to our industry. You probably wouldn't get four or five processors sitting on stand uh, in many other horticultural, agricultural uh, businesses, but it works for us uh, at this point of time and it's really uh, helped um, consolidate our industry to date. And I couldn't, I just want to really finalise the, the key fundamental to returns for almonds is really our dollar. So whatever happens in the US is really important, obviously they are the price setter, and we we're essentially a price taker, apart from we can play the quality counter seasonal uh, aspect. But um, you know that 2011-2013 uh, certainly had an impact on 
our grower returns and we've seen a decline in the dollar uh, the last two years which has really brought a lot more value back to Australian almond growers. And finally, it's a great product. I think it ticks a lot of the boxes that Australian horticulture needs. It is globally competitive. Uh, there's a, there's a um, well-established export markets already. It's counter-seasonal. Uh, you know, most of the almonds are all um, across the, the Californian uh, valley there. So, um, yeah, which to me has got a little bit of risk in it, whereas Australia is a little bit more scattered as far as our, our production hubs are. Very labour efficient. It's water efficient because we adopted uh, world's best practice as far as your irrigation and nutrition systems. Uh, it's robust, so we don't have any outturn issues in overseas markets with almonds going off. Um, it's versatile, it's healthy, it's a very high value crop, even with almond prices declining uh, uh, this year, at this stage. We don't know what's going to happen to California during their bloom. Um, and ultimately, it gives you a great return on your land, but it gives you a great return on your water. Um, it's got a proven track record. How'd I go? Did I sneak it in? Yep, that's great, Brent. Yeah, thank you. And so, uh, thank you, Brent.